Hari Om. In IIM Bangalore, five universities in the world get together and we run a top, really top management program. Very big people, only 30 of them will come. They will spend two weeks in five locations, Japan, France, Bangalore in IIM Bangalore, then one place in US and so on. So this time when these 30 odd people came, they, are, they told me you must uh, uh, talk about Indian knowledge systems. Just before I started, just out of curiosity, I told them uh, they were, there was only one Indian. The rest were all from all over the world. It's a really a global, diverse group. So I told them, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you two minutes. Just take your notebook, just jot down two bullets which you will call as your knowledge system. And they diligently sat down and uh, thought about it and wrote a couple of perhaps bullets for each of them. I did not go through all of that because the entire three hours would have gone on it. I randomly asked, uh, walked around the tables and said, can you please read to us? Uh, I was astonished to see that somebody said in 1983 we did something that is our knowledge system. Somebody said in 1943 we did something that is our knowledge system. Like that they were saying. Then I told them, I am going to talk to you about a knowledge system which is at least five millennia old, if not more. So I come from a civilization which has bathed in knowledge for millennia. So I told, uh, what I am presenting before you is not uh, knowledge of a country, it's a knowledge of a civilization. So I want to tell you there's a difference between a country and a civilization. A country is just a land. You can put the boundaries and political formations, etc., etc. That is called country. A civilization is not. A civilization is the life force of a society. It is what uh, people breathe, what people discover, what people experiment, what people improve. So I said, what? So moment we say Indian knowledge system, there is uh, sometimes a feeling Indian means uh, India. India is a very awkward arrangement in 1947. So I am not talking about India now. I am talking about a civilizational knowledge. So that's what I was telling them, etc. So anyway, in right earnest, I should start Indian knowledge system only with Rig Veda. So I will first recite one, two mantras from a famous suktam in Rig Veda. I will tell you why I am reciting it and then we will move on. So this is that mantra. Na sada sin no sada asit tadanim na sit rajo no vyo oma paroyat kimaravi kimavari vaku hakasya sharman ambak kima asit gahanam gabhiram na mrityura asit amritam na tarhina natya anha asit praketaha ani ida vatam swadhaya tadekam tasma at danyan na parakinchanyasa. There are eight mantras actually. I have just recited the first two mantras. I did this because the moment you recite a mantra like this, I am not talking about foreigners, I am talking about Indians. Indians will come and say, Purohit has arrived to do some puja. This is our understanding of Vedic corpus. You can go and Google Nasadiya Suktam if you wish. A lot of foreigners are reading this, eight mantras. Because this Suktam, in this Suktam, the Rishi is speculating on what is called cosmo, cosmogeny, origin of the universe. Na sat asit, na asat asit tadanim. At that time it was neither sat nor asat. He says, what is all this? Na mrityu asit, there is no death, there is no life. Very beautiful speculation of 
what could have been the origin of the universe because that is the central issue for scientists today the curiosity of cosmogeny is there forever today's modern scientists are exactly like the rishis they speculate they want to understand some basic ideas of existence so that is this sukta you know you have in rigveda alone in the 10th mandala this is in the 10th mandala 129 sukta 131st sukta hiranyagarbha sukta purusha sukta all are in cosmogeny so this is the repository that many of us don't know we think moment we recite it in a particular way there is some mantra some puja etc they are all very important ideas so i'm talking about that kind of an alert system i thought i will just make it very clear before we even start i don't know how many of you can recognize this can anybody tell me what is this this is the only living fort in the world all forts are abandoned in the world unesco said it can you tell me where it is this was built by raja jaisal this is jaisal meer it was built in 1156 which means in another 20 years we will celebrate 1000 years indians know how to put structures which will last kam se kam ek hazar 1000 years if not more raja raja chola you know big temple we celebrated 1000 years some 10 years back we know how to build structures which are 1000 years that is to me indian knowledge that lies the indian knowledge system this is 1000 years old very soon and unesco says probably this is the only living fort because it is people are living there it's not an abandoned fort okay i don't know how many of you can recognize this structure a 500 year old structure in a place i was born this is called tirumalai nayakar mahal in madurai okay look at the beauty of those pillars my grandfather used to sit there and adjudicate he was a judge he used to sit there because my madurai court was running there actually for quite some time before they put a building in the 40s and 50s and so on okay now what is interesting is if you look at our uh, uh, you know uh, architecture books or vastu shastra if i have to use a proper word samarangana sutra dhara for example which is the book for north indian architecture if you want an equivalent text for south indian architecture it is called maya matam that's a dravidian architecture you will find how to design assembly halls see the challenge in assembly halls is you cannot have pillars visibility is gone you should have a large span so how do you build you know it's a civil engineering problem how do you build cantilevers which can stay on there are designs available you know in this uh, this is the same tirumalai nagar mahal just stand out and take a photo that was i stepped in this is just standing in the open courtyard and taking look at the beauty of this 500 years completely abandoned today still it looks like this i went recently i took my daughter and sanila i wanted to show them i was feeling very bad for the whole day it's all filth this is how government of india is maintaining government of tamil nadu is maintaining this structure okay but the point is again how do you design an assembly hall we have chapter 25 of mayamatham will talk about different structures different designs of course this is indian knowledge if you wish right <clears throat> 